A very good morning students, we are in our regular class lecture and for today's class we will discuss something about the residual deposits and for this topic I have referred the book The Principles of Petrology by G. W. Terra. So let us get into the heading the residual deposits. The residual deposits are the insoluble product of the rock weathering which have escaped transportation and they are found over the rock from which they have been formed. So this simply implies that the rock which has been exposed to the atmosphere has been uh, weathered by the geomorphic agent and that has not been transported from that location and that forms the residual deposit and the rock belong to this class are made up of two components the unaltered mineral from the original rock and the insoluble product of the chemical weathering so let us see the first one that is the unaltered mineral from the original rock for example quartz and muscovite are the commonly unaltered mineral that is found in the residual deposit and so and to some extent you can expect feldspar although the feldspars are readily attacked by the decomposition process the other rare durable minerals are the zircon rutile garnet tourmaline kyanite magnetite chloromite ilmenite etc and the next one is the insoluble product that is the common insoluble product of the chemical weathering or the hydrous aluminum silicate of kaolinite haloside group and hydrous magnesium silicate of serpentine talc group. The chlorides, zeolites and other minerals for example various hydrate oxides of iron and aluminum and uh, colloidal silicate are also found along this insoluble product of chemical weathering. Actually this simply indicates that the insoluble product that simply means this product has been weathered but not transported as the weathered product is uh, kept as it is say like a fine grain material and this fine grain material is, has not been dissolved by the groundwater or whatever it is the agent attacks and that has been kept as it is in the location where it got weathered so that is how it is formed the insoluble product of the weather of the rock weathering are usually very fine grain that is we had mentioned already and hence form the matrix for the coarse grain so the left side image show a general example of a residual deposit so we will see the next one that is the texture. The residual sediments are composed of unsorted and angular materials as they have not suffered transportation because as you know the transportation will lead to the well sorting as well as the rounding of the grain. And the grain size of the deposit are determined by the nature as well as the grain size of the weathered rock. If the rock is so for example uh, very coarse grain you can expect a coarse grain uh, residual deposit. And if the rock is say of fine grain, you can expect a fine grain deposit like that. I will give you some example. For example, plutonic rocks like granite will yield a sand sized fragment since the fracture generally takes place around the individual mineral grains. And due to this, what happens? The individual fragments are sharply angular. Whereas in terms of mechanical weathering of a coarse grain rock like you know conglomerate or bruxia generally produce coarse gravelly material. The insoluble material passes into the colloidal state by further weathering and the redeposited almost in situ. So this colloidal state simply indicates it is not dissolved actually, right? That is why we have mentioned it as colloidal. This colloidal precipitate result in the formation of oolites, spizolites and other concretionary structures. And the important type of residual deposits are described below that you will see one after the other. The left side image shows you the oolite structure and the residual structure. The first type of uh, residual deposit is the terra rosa and this deposit is found in limestone countries in arid region put generally. The terra rosa is a reddish clay soil covering the limestone country rock and it constituting the insoluble residue of clay and other mineral matter after the removal of limestone in this country rock that is by solution. In the areas of comparatively high rainfall the terra rosa is washed into the depression say swallow holes or caves soon after it is formed. The bones of uh, Pleistocene animals as well as the relics of primitive man are often found buried in these deposits. In many regions what happens Terrorosa is underlined by bauxite deposits which suggests that it is the earlier product of bauxitization. The material constituting Terrorosa is chiefly clay with small amount of iron oxide in the upper layer. The next one is the laterites and bauxites. You will see first the laterite. Actually, the term laterite, which simply literally means the brick rock, 
was first used by Bochan in 1907 to describe a naturally occurring material from the Angadiburam, Kerala. You can see the Angadiburam uh, lateral deposits in the left side image. A boy is standing there. You can see this section uh, showing the Angadiburam lateral deposit that is in Kerala. Actually, the laterite is a reddish brown porous concretionary deposit made by the made of chiefly of mixture of hydrated ferric oxide with hydrated alumina in various proportion. It also contains in small quantities manganese chloride, titanium dioxide, and sometimes even free silica that is quartz. The deposit covers vast area in tropical and subtropical region. That is, the formation of laterite is favored by warm and humid climate. When the, alumina <coughs> sorry, when the alumina content increases, the red color disappears and it becomes yellowish or whitish with earthy or clay like appearance. And this rock is called actually the bauxite, which got its name from its first occurrence in the box in the south of France. So we will see the bauxite. The bauxite often shows oolitic as well as physiologic structure in tropical and subtropical region that is characterized by an alternation of wet and dry season. The chemical weathering result in the removal of silica and alkali from the silica of alkali slime and alumina that is like feldspars. The iron present in the oxide to insoluble, um, is oxidized to insoluble ferric oxide and hydrate. Thus the final residue is composed of mixture of hydra hydrated oxides of iron and alumina. The laterite is produced from the iron rich material whereas the bauxite is uh, from alumina rich material. And as you know, the bauxite is the principal ore of aluminium. And the last one is the soils. That is, the soil is the most important residual deposit and it is the ultimate product of rock weathering and it is defined as the upper layer of the regolith. The soil passes down into loose broken debris called as the subsoil, which is turned grayed into the unweathered bedrock. The soil may be either on the top of a residual or transported material. And if the residual soil, then the soil and the subsoil made up of material of similar nature of the bedrock. In case of transported soil, what happens? The material of the subsoil as well as soil will be marked varily, various. That is, uh, both are different from that of the bedrock. The soil, apart from the rock debris, also contain organic matter. And this organic matter is called as the humus, which is derived from the bacterial decay of vegetable as well as animal matter. The soil constituting have, constitution have been classified into sand, silt, clay, lime, humus, etc. Depending upon the relative abundance of this constituents. The soil are classified as sandy soil, which is the dominant of sand size material. Loamy soil, which is of say sand and silt or clay size material is dominant. Marls, which constitute of clay or silt with calcium carbonate. Silty soil, which simply shows it is of silt size material and clay soil which is dominant of clay size material whereas the calcareous soil which shows the presence of uh, calcium carbonate as well as the PT soil which shows the dominance of this uh, what you call organic matter that is converted into peat. I hope this will give you a generalized idea about the residual deposits. If you want more you can just refer the books and if you still have any doubt you can dis dis uh, discuss with me in this class. Thank you.